Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Mobile Suit Gundam, starting with episode 8. Last week we watched 6 and 7 and started off the, I guess we'll call it the Garma arc, um, where we're sort of floating over non-Federation space controlled by Xi'an. Why am I being Sean Connery? Um, and uh, uh, Garma starts throwing bad guys at us. Char is, um, I was kind of thinking that Garma and Char would be sort of separated, but instead Char is a part of the tactics and a part Part of the whole battle and is using Garma as a stepping stone if he gets the chance because he doesn't really care about Garma very much. He cares a lot more about himself, which you know, is pragmatic and kind of dickish. Um, but uh, uh, they're throwing stuff at the guys, and the guys are rebuffing those attacks. But it it's kind of harrowing. It's kind of a little scary. It's a little it's a little rough. Um, also. Some, like, internal tensions are going on on White Base uh, between individual, like, named members of White Base, as well as between all of the refugees who kind of want to get the fuck off of this ship that's being attacked. Um, I don't, I'm not on the side of the refugees here. I think that their whole idea of, like, just let us off in Xeon territory is terrible. It's just a, a bad idea, but I understand emotionally where they're coming from, so meh. Um, and it's a way to create an interesting, different kind of conflict than bad guys are shooting stuff at us and we need to defend ourselves. So, that's pretty cool, but we are still sort of stationed above Xeon territory and kind of screwed. Like, we don't really have anywhere to go. Um, uh, we're gonna have a hard time getting in touch with the Federation. Our attempt to get into orbit to, to get in touch with the Federation was kind of stuffed um, in the last couple of episodes, so we're going to have to do something different or fight our asses off. Beyond that, um, on a more individual level, Amuro is struggling, um, and like struggling emotionally with fighting in the Gundam. I'm not 100% sure how to read his struggle. Like, we don't have the context exactly. At least, I don't think we do. Maybe there's stuff there that could imply why he's feeling the way he is, specifically. But um, we haven't, like, made it really a thing yet. Maybe because he hasn't really talked about it to anybody yet. But uh, uh, he's having a rough time, and then he just sort of snaps back into it and does the Gundam fighting, flying thing, uh, and then gets sad again. Um, I'm kind of hoping that we're going to address this more specifically and explicitly, because it feels like there's a lot of interesting room to play with boy in robot doesn't want to be in robot, especially considering that we know there's a lot of room to play with that. It's basically the premise of Neon Neon Genesis Evangelion, right? Like, it's it, that's what it is. Um, so, I'm, I'm really interested in that. I want more. I want more on Amaro and why he feel the way he feel, and whether he can overcome that, because honestly, I want to root for our boy, and the greatest way to get me to root for a character genuinely is to have them struggle with something and to overcome it. That's one of the biggest ways that I can vibe with characters, that I can really resonate with people. Um, so, looking forward to that. Hopefully, that'll happen. Otherwise, they're just going to keep throwing bad, bad robots at us. Bad robot productions. Um, and we're going to have to fight them with the good robots. And I, that's what we got to do. Um, so, here we are. Let's watch episode 8 of Mobile Suit Gundam and see what happens next and whether any of that comes to bear. Um, and what Garma has up his uh, his little sleeveys or tucked away in that one piece of hair that he's always twirling. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I want to say here at the beginning. Let's jump into episode 8 of Mobile Suit Gundam. Uh, so, I've got the episode up and ready to go. It's zero seconds. There will be two versions, picture in picture, in the description. Timer on YouTube. BP timer to count you down. Early access on the Patreon. Go and check that out if you want to, as well as Discord access and other stuff. Um, and the ability to vote in polls and determine what we start watching next in certain slots. So, check that out if you're down. Regardless, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Episode 8. Beep beep timer to count you down to the zero when we start. Let's go. I can't wait for this OP. I, I love it. And as you can see, it is a giant bowl of matcha day. Yay.
second verse better than the first. Am I the only one? I don't know. Can we get a round of applause for all the studio bassists out there? Because that guy's killing it. I know I said that before, but he's still killing it. I actually would love to know who that is and like how many anime OPs he's been a part of. Because just that bassist has probably made like 300 anime OPs or some bullshit. And where they died. Dun, dun, dun. Pew, 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 pew. And apparently they're pretty well matched considering that, you know, Earth is partly occupied and yeah. Yeah. But not hor horrified enough to stop. We still blowing up space stations and killing thousands and thousands of people. All right, winds of war. Also, I don't know if we're going to get there, but I've been told not to look at the title for episode 10 if we do. I actually really like this shot with the shadows from the clouds. I really like that. I like this background as well. I think this is great. Looks like Utah. Oh. Mirai! Mirai! Ooh. Well, at least Haro's okay. Oh. Coley. It's bleak and barren and desolate. Yay! Oof. Oof. Hey, can we just mention that we're pre-male and female character fall onto each other and we make a sex joke in anime? Like, we're before that, as far as I can tell? Holy shit. I'm, I'm sure it's been done by this time. Thank you, Haro. The true hero. Why is this guy still here? Get the fuck out, Reed. Oh, shit. They're new bots. Yeah, let's shit on Mirai, the one holding this bit, this boat together. I almost said this bitch together. I think that would have actually been better. The one holding this bitch together. Bison. Oh, the Tominovsky particles. Okay, sure. Ha ha. Ho ho. He he. Goddamn tops. Somebody, somebody kick Reed out of here for real. Nobody cares. Oh, thanks. I needed the pressure, man. Oh. oh, shit. Refugees. Again? We've done this song and dance, guys. Holy shit. Not again.
Yeah, but what if you die? I guess that's that's the point. Alright. I I agree with you, but you're being a dick about it. Why would they agree to the ceasefire? Like, you're not hurting the Zeons, effectively. You, you don't threaten them in any way. Lol, no. Yeah. Why do you need time bot? Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah, well, that's some bullshit, but we'll take it. No, striking, striking immediately is Char's way. Ooh. Or is Char not gonna uphold the... See, that would be a hard dick move. If he tell, what are you doing, Kai? Oh, he's trying to keep them on board. Yeah, blowing a hole in it to fool the enemy. Holy fuck, Kai! Okay, there come, there go the slow moving ground forces, and a shitload of dops. Uh-oh. I love the map. It looks great. Hee 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 hee. Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe. Man, Char is getting kind of slimy. I kind of like it. Well, that's cool. Oh, that's that's actually a really weird design. But it makes sense as a container carrier ship thing. Sort of based off the big, like, box-carrying helicopters. It's kind of neat. Why do we have a bunch of our core, like, staff on this thing? Oh, I guess Frau Bao is suiting kind of... Oh, no, why is Amaro on this thing? All right. Y yeah, but... Sure, sure, sure. Whoa! What? Hi. <laughs> Hi. I mean, a little bit. Shoot it. <laughs> I I'm actually unclear whether these are uh like the color of the thing isn't the green that they all are. Ah, that's because it's a crater. Oh. It it might actually be. Oh, okay. So the t the town might just not be here anymore. Oh no, there's a that is not a town. That is three buildings. <gasps> Operation Drop Off the Fujis. Oh. We're going down. Bobson? Dude, the names in this episode have been great. Um? Hmm. It's a sneak. It's a sneak. Yeah, but if you make it look too hard like an emergency landing, it might just be one. Wow, chopping trees up. That's crazy. Sweet. Sweet. Well played. Yeah. 
Yeah. Hmm. But why though? What what is the purpose of doing so? Oh, Sharby Thonkin. I think it's at the bottom of the lake, girl. All right. Dewa. Have a nice walk. They don't know. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Zoom. Shoot him. Oh. But, but, but to what end? Like, is the Gundam aboard? What's the... Well, I don't understand what the play is here. Man, you are going to wander nowhere. Ah! No! Shit. Are they going to get saved by Zeons? Doubt it. Is it going to start raining? Nope. Hi. Who? Oh well, yeah, got him. I don't trust women. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Well, that guy's a goober. Is that that's neither Big John nor Bobson, right? Oh, we got a beep on the beeper. Looks like he's in Gundam. Potentially. They're gonna go murder a child. Duh. Ah! Ah! We've been tricked! We've been tricked. All right, that's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. Just the Gundam standing up is pretty dope. Sweet. Sweet. They really, they, they, like, a lot of scale stuff in this episode already uh, that I really like. Bingy! No. They said, whatever happens, I want my son to grow up on Earth. What are you going to do, though? Mm. Fuck. Here, have some things you can't carry. Bye. Yeah, that's actually pretty nice. Thanks, bro. Yeah, we almost just just shot them out of the sky. No, don't shoot them. Don't shoot them. Okay, good, 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 good. Ding, ding, ding. Oh no! What was that flickery flash? Jesus, we're going in hot. You might have to shoot him out of the sky, my man. Dude, if you just hide, they'll think it was... Fuck, never mind, it's too late. Sorry, family men! Oh! 
Well. Wait, what if, like, what if they survive and we do a whole, if only we weren't fighting, we would all just be people who could hang out together and be friends sort of thing. Hey, they survived. Shit. 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 God, what a fortress. Ah, there's the third time we've reused that shot. Does the, uh, the gun tank now have legs? No, you stop, you stop talking to her like that. Which is to say at all. I'm just jelly. Oh. Sure. More like falling with style. I will admit, the suit looks much better now. They're shooting at me in a war? Crazy. Alright, Kai. Get your shit together. Let's go. Cool. Assume the position. Yeah, it feels like the treads were sturdier. Oh, jeez. Fucking awesome explosions and stuff. Yeah, you're in a very powerful, high-explosive high, high mobile suit right now. That's freaking sick. Did you just burn all your... Bleh. Blackjacks. Are those the the tank things? Why would you think that? Shaw, sure, that's absurd. He just explained how it's possible. Oh, I've been saved. All right, now put some respect on his name, Kai. Maybe this will change the way that Kai acts a little bit. Wow, so that was the whole plan. So there's the why that I was looking for. I guess it makes sense. Those are Magella attacks. So which ones are Blackjacks? Because that's a DOP, right? I assume, I think... Okay, no, that's the gun tank. So then what's the red one now? Cool. Reuse? Boom. Oh, <gasps> ha, <gasps> Ho, 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 Captain America. Sweet. Oh, oh, they did. It's pretty hard hitting. Seems like it. Okay, this is sick. That was dope as fuck. Ow. Just gotta do it. Yeah, swords are the answer. You're, you're still basically impenetrable to their weapons at this point, as far as I know. Oh, yoink! Fuck. Yeah, not much more. But thanks, bro. I do appreciate this. I love these cut-ins!
Yeah, you running. Not running fast enough. That guy is dead. Gotta remember that each of these is a person dying, right? Impossible. We've been outflanked, outmaneuvered, baited, and outsmarted. Shit. Now, I want to meet your sister. I don't know, I, I get the feeling that Garma's sister is really hot, but I, I don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe just start society over here with us. Sorry, I'm stirring my matcha with my finger. It's I know it's stupid, but I'm doing it. Mm. Bye, guys. Oh, they're gonna die. Thanks, bro. Welcome to war. Her voice actress is great. Yeah, welcome to war, fam. That sucks. I, I definitely dig this subplot. This is a rough subplot. What is that? What are those? Are those trackers? Oh, they're portholes. Jesus. Scared me there for a second. Oh, they did. They did, but St. Angie's didn't make it to them. Korapu. That feels like end, right? This episode went by fast. Feels like end. It is. Yeah. Bada boom. Uh, awesome. I, I actually really like the subplot of this episode. The main plot is pretty straightforward. I mean, it's, it's a sneaky tactic that I didn't understand until I understood it, and then I understood it, and it was great. Um, something that was really good in this episode are, like, the internal scenes where everything is shaking as they get hit, I thought were really great. Um, because it's the way, it's not the the room shaking that sells it it's the way the characters react to it um especially using haro who is a ball to react to these things and to like fall and fly around and stuff um also haro is dope as fuck and has proficiency in acrobatics because check this shit out what what crazy or at least high deck saves haro is dope as fuck I'm, I I, I want to make a Haro D&D character sheet. Uh, charisma through the roof. Dexterity really high. Seems in, invulnerable, so insane constitution. Probably a Warforged or something. Hell yeah. Haro is dope. Um, but what, what I'm actually getting at here is that these scenes of Haro like, careening down a hallway sell to me the idea that this ship is really big and is rocking pretty significantly when it takes these small blows. Um, read... Man, God, I cannot wait for that guy to be off of this ship, or dead, or both. God, I don't like him. Um, but, I mean, that's more carryover from previous episodes than what we actually see in this episode, so that's fine. Uh, hey, Big John, uh, 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 fucking, fucking Big John is, um, actually a cool Zeon? What? Now, we've had Char, who is a cool Zeon, but he's a cool Zeon in a different way, right? He's cool because he's kind of bad, right? He's he kind of bad, though. Um, Big John is cool because he's, like, a person, like, just a normal person, and uh, doesn't really want to murder people, and uh, actively does things to help people who are in need. It's kind of neat. It's It humanizes the Zeons a whole bunch. We've also had one other cool Zeon, I think, who was Goddamn, um, who went down with the ship and was like the older captain with the, the older mobile suit trying his hardest and succeeding to some extent, but then also dying. But um, I, I like Big John better. I'm very scared because I feel like Big John is, has put a like a big death flag on himself by being a nice guy, right? Like, nice guys die in war is part of the fucking point of the episode and part of the point of the show, right? Um, good people fucking die. Speaking of which, a ton of cool names in this episode. Bison, Coley, Big John, and they were on the phone or on the radio with somebody named Bobson, which was like Bozen, but Bobson? That's, that's great. That's, 
That's fucking crazy. Unless it was actually Bozen and they just misspelled it because they mistranslated it. I don't think so. I think it was Bobson. So that's great. Um, we use the Minovsky particles as a, a, a like hand wave to be like, oh, this is why we can't use missiles and whatnot. So that's that's cool. It sort of gives us a reason to have just straightforward combat. Look at this. Look at this smug motherfucker. Look at this smug motherfucker in the background sitting in his high chair with his arm all bandaged up. Just like, yeah, I am in command here. Fuck off. Fuck off. Um, I also, I'm going to Google this. It's kind of a dangerous Google because maybe something that I don't want to know will come up. But I'm going to Google Blackjack Gundam because we referred to them like twice in the episode. And I have no idea which mech or tank or bird or flying thing or whatever uh, the Blackjacks is. So I'm just going to go Blackjack Gundam. I'm fully not seeing anything called a blackjack uh, that looks anything like what I'm supposed to be looking at here. Uh, so zero, zero clue. I don't think I've been spoiled on anything specifically, but zero clue what that means. I love this hollow map. It's cool as fuck. Actually, I love a lot of the like on screen displays and oh, on screen displays. Head to, like, what? Um, but like the screens and the 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 war rooms and the like locations where all the stuff is up on the walls are really cool and they make this whole thing feel strategic and combaty and neat. Um, Kai. Kai manages to not get any minus ones in this episode, which is a big step in the right direction for Kai. Um, I don't know that Kai gets a bunch of pluses in this episode, but he does fight and he does try. And so he doesn't he doesn't get any minuses for this episode. He doesn't fuck up and deserve a smack in this one, which is, uh, again, a, a big moves from Kai over here making big fucking moves. So that's great. Um, refugees need to leave. They want to go. It's a much smaller number than the, the the many that we had before, but they want to get dropped off. Um, and she has her reasons for it, and they all have their reasons for it, and we have a way to make it into a strategic maneuver. So, fine, sure. Um, this is kind of cute, this moment where Kai, like, is with the kids, but he does give them a, a couple looks that are like, mm, but it's, it's kind of cute, and it's kind of cool. Um, Garma being so confident, and then so cocky, and then getting absolutely walloped is very Garma. Um, seems very Garma of him. And this is our escort, and we meet these characters, and they actually have character designs, and they're actually people so rough um and he does blush a little bit uh i think that i think it's so cute because she's like oh are you jelly i also love her voice actresses hi 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 <laughs> it's so freaking unexpected to me hmm? hi hi Oi. <laughs> And also really cute, and their whole interaction is really cute and very, very good. Uh, hello, little child, and they're they're like, oh, look, it's a child. I, I don't hate children. I'm a human being. Um, I, they're not fucking evil, right? They're not like, ah, ha, 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 hoo, hoo, hoo. children, murder them. I'll clip that out of context. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, just Just collecting those. So we commence our operation. Purple smoke. We trick them. We fool them. We do a fake emergency landing, which is actually pretty sick. Cleaving trees in half. Ba-boom. Um, uh, literally chopping through trees with our helicopter rotor things. Sick. And again, what sells it for me is not this external stuff. Not this stuff here. It's all cool, but it doesn't sell it for me. What sells it is the people inside reacting to the sudden change in, in, in velocity, the change in force, right? Suddenly being thrown against walls, thrown forward, losing their balance, trying to catch their balance again. It's really interesting. So uh, I also love, I think this is probably an iconic Char thonk. Hmm... Hmm, just with the slow zoom in. I think it's great. I think it's super rad. And he's still shook about her. <laughs> ha ha ha. Okay, so off they go walking into the middle distance because it fully doesn't exist out here. Um, and struggling. Lose all their clothes and shit. Sucks. Uh, I also, I love this moment where Frau... Being a, a a cutie gives him a little a little cheeky wink, and he gets super flustered. Uh, it's very cute. Uh, yeah, very cute. I also think that the whole sequence of the Gundam being laid out here and then slowly getting up, and more importantly, maybe the sound effects. <laughs> Of Gundam boot up, you know we haven't really seen it since episode 
one, right, is is getting into the Gundam and getting going. It's always been launching out of the white base, right? So I think it's pretty rad. I think it works really well, and it's it's super cool. And then the whole sense of scale that we get from it is once again awesome, and I think I think it's super great. Um, hey, you know, you gotta love little kids falling over. What what could be better than that? No, it's not good. But they are terrified, and they're dropping a bomb, and he is ready to shoot them. But it's supplies. Hey, we're humans. Uh, we don't hate you for no reason, so that's cool. But then they see me, and so we have to do something, right? Amaro has to, because he, he knows that it'll spoil the whole operation. So regardless of them being good people, war requires us to fight them and to kill them. And that's kind of a statement about war. Nice. Well done. It's a, it's a super duper 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 simple statement, right? Super duper. Kids can understand and comprehend this. And it's great at doing what it's doing. Why do we have to shoot at these guys? They're nice guys. They're legit nice, right? They, they flirted with Frau. Now, that might be a reason to shoot them. Um, they flirted with Frau. They gave a little cheeky wave. Uh, they have emotions, they get flustered, they have, like, interests and maybe families back home, right? Big John says, like, some of the, you know, Garma's young, he might not understand the, the way that family men like us would think. So, we imply that Big John might have a family back home. Um, they're people, and they're just doing their job, and their job happens to be murder all the people on the other side from us. Oh, it's like war is fucked up and antithetical to, like, being a normal person. Oh, it's like war corrupts and destroys people. Oh, weird. War sucks. Fucking great. Fucking clippity-clippity-clap. Clippity-clap. Love it. Um, and terrifying, right? But they land in a lake and we're fine. Okay, so we start the war. We start our shot reuse. Boom. I still think it's a great shot of that hole, of that rocket. It looks great. And we get this thing. I don't know what it's called. Um, I don't know what to refer to this as, because I thought that this was an upgraded slash changed gun tank, because that's what Kai has kind of been in before and stuff, but it's not. It's a, it's a different one. That I, I don't feel comfortable looking it up, because I feel like if I look it up, I'm gonna get spoiled on something. But it's a different one, and it's pretty fucking rad. It's, it's actually pretty dope. Uh, big ol' red tank thing does fall over like a doofus but it's his first time really piloting um and honestly props to kai for going hard here we see him struggling and fighting and shooting and we see some great explosions this is this is the one that looks so good um just firing all his ammo but he takes some chunks out of that uh uh fuck what are they called i forget what those are called uh, uh something Ma magellan attack the magellan attacks like top thing right um yeah Bam. Super cool. Okay, and we get flunked. Uh, impossible. We can't have gotten flunked. But no, you, you got flunked. Look, it's the Gundam. It, it, it's the Gundam. It's here. Uh, and we get some cool Gundam battling. He, he does some Gundam battling. Haro gets bounced around a bit. Uh, uh, the Gundam does the shooting and the stabbing and the slicing. And we get a little cute little moment over here um, that is cute as hell and then we immediately follow it up with a striking high contrast impact framey black on white on black um like illuminating the battlefield with gunshots sequence right we could be friends if only we weren't enemies who kill each other it's like war is bad wow i know i'm being a little bit sarcastic here but i'm fully serious i think this is great I think it's ultra simple, and I, I actually think that's a good thing in this circumstance. Um, I've said it before uh, in, in various places, and maybe even in a Gundam reaction, I don't know. But some of my favorite shows are the ones with the simplest messages. Um, I love Precure. I love it. I really do. And its whole message is built around being nice to people and being friendly, right? Uh, it's a little different from season to season, but that's basically what it is. Follow your dreams, be a good person, be nice to other people, try to understand where they're coming from, bada bing, bada boom, precure. This is a little bit different, it's a little more boy-oriented, you could say, uh, but it's like, man, all these robots and shit are fucking cool. Technology, awesome. Space travel, rad. Science, great. Killing people with science, kind of sucks. Kind of, kind of blows. 
using using cool robots and shit to totally murderate people. Not fun. Not not that fun. Looks fun. Not that fun. They're real people, and you're killing them. It's not very good. Try not to do that. I think that's a great message. I think it's really really rad. Um. Okay. Cool. So we get some slices. We get some dices. And it's nice. Hell yeah. Uh, and of course, you know, Amaro is smiling here, but he's smiling because he's surviving and he's executing the plan as it must be executed. Uh, okay, so they must return to their unit. War goes on. War never changes. I fully feel like the green-haired dude of this duo is just a, a character from My Hero Academia. I don't know why I feel that way. He just, yeah, this guy just seems out of place to me for whatever reason. I don't know. Just a weird character design. Um, kind of a cool character design for what he is. And I thought we were doing a, an ominous zoom here as we zoom in on these red dots. I'm like, oh, tracker beacons. No, no, nope, nope. Just portholes. Rad. Simple episode, straightforward episode. Um, good mixed message about war and stuff. Uh, cool subplot. About the uh, the Big John and his homie, who I don't know if we I don't know if he gets named, but um, a cool subplot. I like this episode a lot. I'm gonna check it on Sakagaburu, see if any of those cuts of people like falling over inside ships have credits and stuff to them. So let me check. Okay, unfortunate. Um, there are no listed cuts on Sakagaburu for episode eight. Um, yeah, no, that is that is sad to me for sure. Um. Okay, cool. Well, that's that's unfortunate. I said it before, I'll say it again. I like this episode. I like its subplot. I like its characterization of, of individual soldiers. Instead of just being faceless Zakus, they're actually people. I like the sense of scale. I like a lot of the background work in the episode. Um, this one's pretty cool. I guess what I'll do is I'll actually check this one on ANN um, to see who did the direction and stuff for it, just to just to find out. Okay, so for the most part, we list unit director instead of episode director. So that's interesting. Let me check storyboard first. Um, is Shinya Sadamitsu, and this is uh, Sadamitsu's second storyboarded episode after episode four. Um, yeah, just skimming. I'm not seeing anything that I recognize uh, except a two storyboard credits on Idion, which is cool. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about it that I recognize. Oh, oh, Saramitsu, this is Saramitsu, director of Birth. Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. That actually might track to some extent with some of the background usage, but I don't know. Because again, he storyboarded it, so it's hard to say. Um, and then for unit direction... It, it might be Sadamitsu as well. It is. Okay. So Shinya Sadamitsu did unit direction and storyboarding on this episode. So we can credit a a fair amount of this episode's like stylistic feel to him. Of course, under Tomino's guidance as as core director. So that's pretty interesting. Um Yeah, cool. I I, I knew I recognized that name. I was like, I was looking at the list. I'm like, I don't recognize any of these shows. Oh, birth. Birth OVA. Yeah, no, that'll that'll do it. That'll be a thing for sure. Awesome. Cool. Uh, that's good to know. Cool. So this was episode eight, Winds of War. Let's move on to episode nine. I'm going to take a breaky thingy, do a sinky thingy, and be back in a second for episode nine of Mobile Suit Gundam. See you in a moment. Peace. All right. Welcome back. We're good to go for episode nine of Mobile Suit Gundam. Um, let's see what happens in this one. We just sort of kind of won a battle, uh, did an outflank, did some blowing up some bad guys um, who it turns out are not all bad guys. They're just bad guys, right? It's kind of a difference. Um, let's see what happens next. Beep beep timer. Let's get into this OP. And I mean, get into it. My shoulders hurt a lot. Okay. Mm.
Yeah, I definitely think the second verse is way, way cooler. Sweet, 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 sweet. Hello, doggos. Ooh, we're in wreckage. Cool. White base? Or is that a scout ship? Nope, that's full white base. Tara's the best. Tara's the best. Tara's the fucking bomb. Ah, hello, hello. Ah, I'm over here being sad. I think that's reasonable. You've been on the run. Is she a... Yeah, but does that mean she's a trained therapist? No, I guess you're talking about a, a, a medical. Okay. True? Well, here we are. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah, but it's not right. Hmm. You think? Yeah, where did you get any of that idea, man? I mean, it's re it's relatively reasonable to think that, but like where where actually is that coming from in? Why tobesu? Correct. Seems like Am Amuro might actually be right. Whoa. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Ho oh, little thieves. Maybe not to read. Ah, uh, hello, children. Aw. Aw. Fuck yeah, tomato. 
Fuck yeah, tomato. Oh yeah, tomato. Ah! <laughs>
This is the the bad guys are sortying track. I dig it. Oh, that bass. Ooh. Hey, he didn't fall on his ass this time. All right, you snark in Amaro again. Stop it. Stop that. You st you stop that, Kai. Give him give him an answer. He might do that just that. He also might smack you. Oh. He can't. Yeah. Nope, he gets smacked. Yeah, for real. Not a great way to resolve problems, dude. Kind of. Honestly, kind of. Yeah. I know you're struggling here, dude, but we're all going to die, right? Is the, the issue. Like, all, all of us. This is bigger than you. But it is true that it sucks and it's fully continuous, right? The battle just keeps going. No Gundam, no Gundam. Don't interfere, just watch. Hubris, hubris, hubris. Because Amuro will come out. Shit. Let's go, Kai. Fuck. <laughs> oh, hey, wait, that's a that's a meme. Where have I seen that referenced? Utana? No. Maybe Ava. Oh. <laughs> All right, that hurt. We're talking. We're talking about Shar. We're talking about Shar. Are you gonna get in it, Fro? Oh, let's go. No, I'm down. Wow, called out. Oh, oh, oh my God, Fro is brutal. What the fuck are you on about, man? Why not? Because she's a woman? Fucking don't say that. All right, all right. That's what it took. Gotta, gotta impugn your manhood, and that'll maybe get you going. Holy shit, that was brutal. Absolutely blown the fuck out, dude. Walloped. Womped. Grab. Grab. BB? Awesome. <sighs> oh, there's that cut again. Fucking in my sleep, man. What's the new tactic? All right. Take pride in what you can do.
What did Charges do? He just turned off the radio in, didn't he? Yo, did he just make a big play? Yo. Did he just remove the transmitter or like remove the, the audio link? Okay. I mean, cool. Woom. Just gonna, just a leaping hand, hand to hand in the sky. That's some barbarian shit, dude. So he's flying 20 feet above me? I leap. <laughs> it's pretty rad. Ah. Ah, getting the respect. All right, Kai. All right, Kai. Jesus. <laughs> Fucking shit. Clean landing. Boost. Okay, you are out of missiles now. Super officially. Like a beast. Eh. All it all it took was me calling you a wimp. He for sure only had four missiles. Okay, that's eight. Seven or eight. Okay, now it's done. Swords? Oh. 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 No. Got him. That's a wing. Cool freeze frame. I, I a little long for my taste, but that was great. Not coming in. But the gal doesn't know that you're coming. But this would work strategically. Hi. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? For real? For real, for real. Oh, shit. What up? Thanks, homie. I don't know, but I want to know. I don't know, but I want to know. Oh, he made it back. What? Yo, it didn't work. You did. Holy shit. Oh. Oh, what? 
hey, we're getting a bunch of supplies and shit from the Federation transport. Man, a lot of stuff just happened really fast. Hey, what up? Oh, ho. hey, she kind of cute, though. Hey, the the short red hair, kind of kind of baller though. Nice hat. M Matilda. <laughs> Decoy. Hmm. Gotcha. Some have not. I see, I see. That means everything to Amara, though. So you think I've earned a hug? Oh, I got a I got a shoulder tap. Yes. Esper? Where that's sort of out of nowhere. Yo, she giving you that eye. What up? What's good, girl? I'm sorry. I'm I'm fully sorry. I think she's super cute. Got gotta love a woman in uniform, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 Ooh. Leaving a little bit of that perfume. Oh wow. Yeah, no, for real. Bro, you you yeah, you know Frau. What are you talking about? You never smelled a woman before. The fuck? What? Somebody somebody was real horny in the last like minute of this episode. All right. Ooh. Talk about woman. What the fuck? I mean, that's a Xeon girl faux show. Is that Garma's sister? I'll bet that's Garma's sister cuz she kind of hot though. Got to got to got to say Matilda. Woo! Woo! Look at those freaking the the freaking things on the neck. She's uh high up high up in the chain of command. Hell yeah. Mm. Um, sorry, I'm 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 half joking, but also half not joking. So sad boy Amaro for sad boy reasons. He cannot sleep, and that is part of why he's being a grumpy boy. Uh, but more importantly, he feels like he's not doing anything right. Like he's individually doing stuff, but like, what is the point of all of this? Why are we even fighting? Why are we even here just to suffer, right, is basically the deal. And we see his anxiety coming out in some physical things with the nail biting. And I, I think this whole sequence is is kind of exactly what I was looking for, right, is some sort of reason for why Amaro feels this way. But also, it's sort of like a manifestation of his feelings. Um, this sort of paranoia of, like, we're just a decoy, they're just using us, is not only the reason for his feeling the way that he does, but also like a, a symptom of his feeling the way that he does. He feels this way. And so he comes up with a justification for it. Um, and that's pretty interesting. So we get our message from general HQ and it all kind of lines up. Right. And then we see that shit's kind of falling apart down in here um, with kids stealing food, adults stealing food from children, sad tomato, the saddest tomato, uh, and this motherfucker right here, holy shit, dude, are you fucking kidding me? Are you, are you fucking kidding me? See, but Amro should step in at this point and call this guy out for, for doing what he's doing, right? Not give up his own food, necessarily, but to call out the theft and the, the foolishness and the, the stuff that's destroying us from within. So, sad tomato. Um, I don't know what to say except sad tomato there. It's a very sad tomato. Uh, yeah. Then we have our chat uh, with Bright, and Amro basically hits him with the, lol, no, bro, I don't want to, I don't, don't want to do nothing. And so we, we kind of deal with it. We send out some other boys. Um, Garma getting in his ship is pretty rad. His suit is pretty cool. I gotta, I gotta grant that. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a pretty cool goddamn suit. I gotta wait for the subs to update. There we go. Cancel the sortie, get back. No, I'll go and shoot them down. So we see Garma's pride immediately. And I kind of thought we were going to like kind of fully lose Garma in this episode. But no, um, he manages to make it back. But 
patrol is out. We send Garma out, and he is, uh, Amaro is a sad boy. So it's different for me. I keep getting forced out there. They're, they will eventually get sick of it, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, Now, this is some pretty, some pretty rough stuff that Amaro is going through, but come on, man. We are... The fact of the matter is we are all going to die if we don't put in the work, right? Like if Mirai was just like, I don't feel like piloting the ship. Who the fuck is going to do it? We're all going to die. Amuro goes, I don't feel like piloting the Gundam. Who the fuck is going to do it? We're all going to die. You're the one with the knowledge. You put the time in to learn. Why? Why did you do that in the first place? It's because he honestly wants to help. Now, the whole can you guarantee I'll sleep uh, soundly afterward is kind of an unfair request. It's an unfair ultimatum demand thing. It's not all right. It doesn't, it's not good. Same with I can't help how I feel. It's kind of wimpy. Yeah, if you didn't, I would have been dead. And this is true. This is true. You fought to save people. You've got to get your head in the game, and you've got to keep doing that. So everybody out except for him, and uh, uh, Bright goes hard. Please stop. Pilot it yourself. Well, I can't. You're the one who can. And I, I actually really like this moment from Bright, and I think his voice actor nails the emotion of it. I know it's a really small line, but... But it, it strikes me as, like... Bright being like, God damn it, if I were competent enough to do all of these things, I would do them all myself so that other people wouldn't have to. Like, that I would, but I can't. You're the guy. You're the one. You, you are the one, Neo. Come on, man. Matrix up. And we revert to violence, right? So, unable to solve this problem with words, we smack Amaro around in the hopes that it's going to work, and it doesn't. It fully doesn't. And Bright is... He has this moment of being, like, shocked by it. You hit me. Mr. Bright, he has this moment where he's like, oh, shit, did I just do that? What have I become? And then he doubles down on it because he's in command, right? But he can't look at him. Fine, throw your tantrums. Fuck off. Jesus, how rough. Okay, so battle, battle ensues out here, and it's going fine, sort of. Um... But uh, this is where this is where Shar does the thing, right? No, it's it's a little later. Don't interfere. Just watch Shar. But he does it a little bit later. Okay, requesting cover. Fix our shit. You hit me again. Not even my father ever hit me. God, I know I've seen that reference somewhere. I I know it because I know that GK GK. Uh, posted on whatever video that was when I reacted to it and was like, oh, hey, that thing that happened was a reference to Gundam and a very famous line from Gundam. And uh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Some Something iconic. Show me a real man who's grown up without being hit once. I don't, I don't like that very much. I don't know if it's, if it's untrue. I know it's untrue, but gross. Um, I'll never get in the Gundam again. Okay, buddy. All right, pat, pat, pat. You dingus. And at this point, Frau steps in. Get a hold of yourself. You're being pathetic. We get rocked. I'm going to go do my job. Right now, you're no better than an insect. Damn. Laying into him. Given your great talent, I thought you'd be able to surpass Char, who is our benchmark now, I guess. Um, I'm disappointed. Thanks, Dad. And somehow, mentioning Char gets Amuro going. Wait a second. Wait a second. But Frau hops out uh, to absolutely body, absolutely body Amuro in the most brutal fashion that I have ever seen. You don't need, you don't need physical blows to destroy a man's confidence. Just do what Frau is doing right here. Hey, wait, there's a manual, right? Gimme dat. I'll jump in the Gundam and fight. What's up? The person you've been trying to protect. I'll do it. I got it. I hate people who won't take pride in what they can do. I really like this line. I really like it. Um, it's a it's a core rocking line. You are capable of doing X thing. Take pride in that. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. I really like this line. Yeah. Okay. Onward. 
if you can't and he, and she re she reorients his like his outlook on the situation. If you can't proudly declare that you have protected the white base and everybody in it until now, you're not a real man. So we impugn his honor. And then he's just like, nah, you can't pilot it. And I thought he was going to say, because you're a woman. Uh, but no, instead, it's mostly because I'm going to do it. And off he goes. I really like it. He's not happy about it, but I really like this whole this whole conversation. I think it's great. I think it's super duper great. Okay, some big explosions and stuff. Some fighting and stuff. Hugh can leap into the air and fight them in the air. Hell yeah. And I, I so I thought he had put it somewhere else, but he just surreptitiously leans in, puts some dirt on it, I guess, and causes faulty communication. Holy shit. What a skeevy play from Gar from from Sharma. I just called I just double down fucked up. Gar and Sharma. No, uh uh what a crazy play from Shar. We know exactly what he's going for here. Let Garma die heroically, quote unquote, via his own hubris. Absolutely amazing. Also, the Gundam's whole leap into the air and shoot stuff fight is super sick. I love the way he gets blasted back by the recoil of his thing. I love the fact that he just full, like, punts a plane in the sky. This is some insane fun fighting stuff. It's great. Um, and we see that he's, you know, he's getting into it and he's doing the thing that we needed him to do. Wow, he's fighting like a real person. How cool. And it is. It's super rad. Um, and he chops a chunk off of Garma's fighter, and Garma puts together a plan that might might get them the victory, and it doesn't come through, partly because of the communication thing, but also partly because Shar actively chooses not to take the opportunity. I suppose because doing so would mean he was fulfilling Garma's plan, and he would have to like give the glory of taking down the mobile suit to Garma. That's so, so, so slimy. I dig it. I dig it in a bad guy. I really do. Super sick. Okay, so we meet Matilda. She kind of cute, though. Just gotta say. Um, Char's whole thing here, where he actually flips it around, and he's like, oh, yeah, well, we could have shot down the enemy's transport, but guess what, man? You were in the way. So really, I was saving your life slimy i love that we get a slow pan here hell yeah woman in uniform a gorgeous a gorgeous and of course frau is not happy about it but we get a little shoulder tap um and that spank bank material for a week for amaro hell yeah sorry i sorry for making it gross <coughs> but the show does say you know it was amaro's first experience of the scent of a woman oh gross um but i agree i can't i can't help it i think matilda's cute too so fuck it sure 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 okay that's episode nine we're gonna check it on sakagaburu and then i think we'll come back and we'll do one more um just because it seems like something's gonna happen there um i've been told to avoid looking at the title of the episode so it makes me think that something big is the title of the episode so uh let me check sakagaburu and see if there are clips on there and if so we will go through them oh yeah there are a couple there are a couple all right let's check those out boom bam bang boom bam boom sweet yo suhiko it's the storyboard, or the Genga, of smacking that boy. And it's a big ol' smack of that boy, and an iconic moment as far as I know. So, hell yeah. Uh, I did really like Shar- or, or Gar- I keep doing that, Sh uh, Sharma. Um, Garma putting on his suit, and then I guess running out and jump jumping in the ship. I think it's a cool run cycle. It's cool. And the ships are cool. Yeah, cool. All right, there's our, our back smack and uh, talk back and uh, all these emotional character-driven moments and faces and things. And then running down the thing, suiting up, zip. Um, it's pretty rad. It's 
pretty cool. Yeah. Thanks, G. Kali. Posted eight months ago. Hell yeah, dude. You'd a bomb. Ah, and this is the first schmack, I think, or, or the aftermath of the first schmack leading into second schmack. Nope, leading into first schmack. Cool. And theft of things, presumed Yasuhiko because of all the character acting involved in all the faces. I believe it. 100%, I believe it. Um, and, oh, that one was not uploaded by GK? No, it was. Okay. Favorited by the SAR is what I saw, and that, that messed me up. Cool. And running down the hallway, going up some stairs. Fuck. I loved, I'm so glad to see this because I loved this cut of Haro just hopping up the stairs this way. It's so sick. Um, and then sad boy being sad is, of course, some Yas goodness of the faces and things. Hell yeah. Okay, cool. That was mostly all I wanted to see was to just look at all the clips and cuts. And I'm good with that. Cool. Uh, we're going to move on to episode 10. Give me a moment to do a breaky sinky thingy and I'll be back in a second. Peace. All right, I've got episode 10 up and ready to go. I've been able to avoid looking at the file name um, so far. I just have to remember that as soon as, not the OP, but then the sequence after it is done and we get the bitty dee. Um, I can't look at that because that will have the thing on it. And maybe I'll, because once I'm editing, I will have seen it. I'll like cut it out so that you don't see it either. So we don't get spoiled on whatever the fuck this episode's title is. Let's go. Beep beep timer. Oh, that was so matcha y. Ugh. Ooh. Wow. I didn't see it. That was, oh shit! I you could hear it. I know that. I know it's Garma. I don't know what the second word is. I'm gonna guess it's not good for Garma. That's my guess. Oh, do we get to meet his hot sister? What up? What up? What up? What up? Ah, oh, lavish. Oh, who the fuck is that? That's some Warhammer shit. Oh, lots of ladies and gentlemen. Bruh, the scummiest of scum. Jesus. 
The scumbliest of scum. You gotta go talk to my boy. Ugh. Oh, what a voice. <coughs> hey, Germanic. Probably. Ah. Oh, it's not his sister. It's that guy's daughter. Hey. Grr, why is she so cute, grr? Hey, dude, you're wearing... Why are you wearing your glasses inside, dude? What's up with that? Hey. Hey, got him. Oh, botcha. Yeah, fuck your dad. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, shit, we got love. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, no, he's dead. <laughs> ogre, it's ogre, dude. You're gone. Yeah, he's gonna try for something risky. And Char may or may not spoil it for him. Oh. A schmooch. A schmooch. A schmooch. Uh oh. <gasps> Are you schmoochin' the lady? No schmoochin'. No schmoochin'. He's dead. He's gone. He's gone, man. He's got a girl back home. Might as well be on the front lines taking out a photo of his girlfriend. Seriously. Might as well just tell us he's close to retirement. I swear I'll retire. Nope. None of this is going to happen, dude. Yep, last time you're ever seeing him. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. You're really cute and your love is pure. I'm sorry. That's that's a bad combination. Real rough, dude. I'm I, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But I I don't think so. I don't think so, man. Hey, what up, car? Oh, shit. <laughs> Are you in a city? Maybe. We got spotted. Or is that a giant flare or something? What is that? And then the gall? Okay. Okay, we're kind of hard soloing it. Yeah, get ready just in case. But it, but if if we can avoid conflict, that's better. Not anymore, baby. 
Yeah, yeah, you're done with the being a civilian after last episode, man. You made your choice. Hey, there's the cut. Gotta suit up. Hey, hi, Kai. Kai has not lost any points for two episodes, so we gotta keep that in mind here. He hasn't gained many either, but he hasn't lost any, so good job, buddy. That's pretty rad. Man, I wish we had a backup cam. Ho ho. Oh, really needed a backup cam. <laughs> Uh, shut the fuck up. Maybe. Bruh. Bruh. Gotta keep track of your kid, dude. We're gonna get found. <laughs> Are there people in this city? I, I assume there are. Or maybe it's Federation City, so they just don't care. Holy shit, just straight to the carpet bombing. Let's go. And dropping bomb. Whoa, that is too real. That is too real, man. I mean, the U.S. dropped millions of pounds of explosives onto Japan during the war. So, it's a little, little close to home, I think. Yeah, and we're nailing the fear of being inside and trapped during that. That's rough, buddy. Sailor seems fine. Sailor's strong as fuck. Huh? What's going on with Ojo Sama? Wonder what that little locket is. He's the son of Zeon's leader? I wasn't aware that he was that high up. Fucking hell. How many is that now? Is that like five or six smacks? Jesus Christ. Clearly. Jesus. I don't understand why the son of Zeon's leader would not be good enough for her. I feel like that would be, like, a solid political motivation to make that happen as well. I don't, I don't get it. But okay, it doesn't matter. He doesn't like the guy. He doesn't like Garma. Actually, you know what? If their love is forbidden, there's a chance Garma survives. Yeah, who gave who gave him a, co a copy of Sun Tzu? Not cool. Got him. Mm hmm. 
Yes, leave it all to me. Yes. Eh. Oh. Shar in the special suit. He won't. He won't. Or maybe he will. I don't know. I don't know. This is the last time you two are seeing each other face to face now, isn't it? Yeah, no. No, he's dead. I'm 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 sticking with my guns here. I think he's a goner. Wow, they're dropping right there. How does he how did he know? I uh oh, look. Alright, lead them off. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Blow, blow them out of the sky. All right. Oh, here it is. Getting going. Zoom. Hey, come and get me. Neener, neener, neener. Come on, Char. Come on, Char. Come and get it. Get some. Let's go. Bloop, bloop, beep, beep. Cylons. Misleading. He knew? He must have known. Oh, shit. Very, very close. God, Char's good. What a cool cut. Rocking in the in the suit. Certainly cannot. Remember your plan, though. Your plan is to bait. And he is getting better, because it's not just the combat AI, it's the boy inside. Oh, got him. Oh, ho, ho, got him. All right, we got to be out of missile soon. Oh, shit. Ha ha. Wait. Did he just give them the bait?
Okay, that doesn't feel like enough. Okay, maybe it feels like enough. That might be enough. Moody Des. That's kind of badass. Oh, it's enough. Full evil. Yo, you gotta lean in. If you know you're bad, you gotta be bad. Holy shit, Char. It might. It fully might, dude. He's trying. Through the roof? Or are we out? Yo. Yo. Nope. No glory. Only guts. And no major impact. Just falling short. Oh, what an explosion! Holy Shar. What a fucking play! What a motherfucking play! Holy shit! Char Char Charmander is evolving. He's Charmeleon now. Holy shit. Oh my god. Your boyfriend's dead. <laughs> Fuck. I hope she runs away and becomes part of the Federation or something. Oh, tell me there's something scratched in the tree or something. God damn it. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, I'll tell you why it happened. One man with a dream. His name is Char. He wants to be the best and the worst. Ooh. Ooh, some actual Xeon stuff. Oh, is it his sister? Oh, it's that guy. That's gotta be his dad. The Sovereign. What is up? But no sister? Oh. That's Iselina still, right? Or is that the si I don't know. I don't know. But that's a funeral. That's a state funeral right there. No, I think that is Iselina. 
because she's got the same uh, locket, right? Yeah, she's still got the locket. So I think that is her. Cool. Holy shit, the plays. Char with the moves. Out here schmoovin' on them. Ah, uh, shocking. Glorious. I mean, the red sun, the whole fancy party, and then the hard death flag setup. Um, so, yeah. Uh, oh, ooh, let me see. Because I know it was Garma's something. Garma's, like, end or something like that. Garma's fate. Got it. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Um, so everybody loves Garma. He's so smashing. He's so handsome. Or dashing is the word I was looking for there. Uh, so handsome. We get some smooches in. Um, and he fully says that he'd be down to betray the Zeons just for love. Oh, yeah. Full death flag. Sorry, buddy. Um, uh, you're gonna die here. I really like this scene where we topple this car. I, I like to imagine that there's a couple in there making out as though they're at a drive-in movie theater and then they just get dinked by a giant spaceship floating by and they're just like, ah! It's great. Um, love these scenes with the light change inside as we're spooked and trying to stay away from stuff and then the flare is going off and freaking out. Love the idea of trying to parallel park uh, a giant ship in a baseball stadium or a, a ruined stadium. Super sick. Um, and everybody just tense and like tense for battle just in case. I love that feeling. It feels great. It's kind of horror movie-esque, but, um, but just rad. It, it's just cool. Okay, so we send out our forces. Fully just choose to carpet bomb stuff, uh, and it gets really real with the carpet bombing. Like, that fully just looks like a B-52 bomber dropping, dropping a load of, uh, a payload would be the word there, not a, not dropping a load. I'm gonna take a minute. No, it's fine. Um, uh, dropping a payload onto a city. Absolutely horrifying. Okay. Uh, and she's trying to escape to see her boy, and that's not going to work. We get another smack because people don't know how to resolve conflicts in, in, inside families or even friendships without violence. Yay, yay. And um, Char starts making moves. I'll, I'll go down and scout out, man. I got you. We, we got this, boy. Totally, totally. We're super friends, man. May the glory of victory be yours. JK, may I eliminate you as competition and make the glory of victory my own. Char with the skeezy, slimy moves here. Absolutely crazy. And he, he does, he, like, he's self-aware in that he recognizes, oh, this tingles in the back of my brain as like, oh, I shouldn't be doing that. But then he does it anyway. So he's a bad guy, right? Like, Knowing it's one thing if you do something wrong and you're like, shit, it was a crime of passion. It was a momentary lapse. It was, I didn't even know it was wrong, right? But when you're actively just like, ah, something about me tells me that this is a bad idea that makes me a bad person. Well, guess I'm going to do it anyway. That's when you know you're a bad person. Hell yeah. I love it. I love it. Not because it makes me, well, no, no, it makes me love Char more, right? He leans in hard on being the bad guy here, and it's fucking sick. Um, this whole combat is great. This whole urban environment with lots of uh, debris and lots of things to hide behind and jump between combat, excellent. Like this moment where he blows this guy's suit's head off uh, as he peeks around a corner, super cool, utterly rad. Um, but we spot Trojan horse, we spot white base, and I love this whole sequence of prepping up, just getting ready for it, getting ready for it, getting ready for it, making Garma think that he is gonna be the hero, and boom, full force of white, white base, uh, and the gun cannon and the gun tank all firing upon him, and he decides to super be the hero here with, um... Trying to full go 180 and ram them. You gotta respect it, I think. The whole sequence is also... It's almost... Um, it's almost Gunbuster 
esque how some of the battles play out in Gunbuster, where it's just these constant still frames with lots of effects going on um, to give us the and, and jumping around between different things to give us a sense of like scale and a sense of craziness and chaoticness in the battle. I think it's great. I think I really like it. As the ship starts coming down, it looks awesome as it's just careening uh, through the sky, flames going off, and blame this on the misfortune of his of your birth. And he actually fully on radio calls him out amazing amazing you were a good friend to me but your father is the one to blame why for being powerful and he does a full villain laugh <laughs> 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 right like awesome awesome amazing 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 my man's absolutely horrifying uh, and he he almost does it too. Pieces of the ship flying off. S sick cut. This whole spinning cut as one shot. Super sick. And then we keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting, and it disintegrates moments before impact. Blam, blam. And it looks awesome. And Garma is trying. <sighs> probably an iconic line also iconic to have the uh or or really classic i should say to have the flashes to his love thinking of her in his last moments as the whole ship absolutely evaporates and garma is not um and it's I also, I gotta say, I think maybe my favorite cut in the entire episode is these pieces of debris just sort of dinking off of the white base because it's it's a perfect encapsulation of what just happened, right? Garma tried so hard, and the it was the equivalent to throwing rocks at a passing car, right? It did nothing, um, except maybe cause some some like external damage. And then this shot also works in the same way, so close and yet. Not quite. Just falling short. All because of Char. In, in, again, in a situation where Char probably could have leveraged this because of how close it was. If he'd given him the right information, they could have taken him out. And White Base could be no more. And Char and Garma would have to share the spotlight. And he cannot, cannot have that happen. He has to be the one to do it himself. And so because of his own greed for, like, power and fame and respect and all that shit, White Base survives once more. That's so good. His evil causes them to fail, right? It works for Char, but it causes the Zeons to fail. His greed, his desire for that fame and fortune causes the mission to fail. If he could have just shared the credit with Garma, it would have worked. That's crazy. I love it. I love it as an idea. Okay, so she mad. Duh. And she sad. Duh. And off to the Principality of Xeon we go. And for the first time, we see the rulership of the Principality in Papa. And he mad. And I guess she mad too. Will it turn them against Char? I doubt it. I mean, there's no way. Okay, so besides the obvious awesome sequence of this episode, the final sequence here as he, he careens his giant plane in trying to ram white base out of the sky, uh, fucking sick and super well done, I think. Um, there are a bunch of those cool combat sequences in the city. The whole party is great, and the, the character designs in it are hilariously awful. I, I mean, not like they're bad character designs. I mean, they're, they look like awful people. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's the upper crust. Um, the whole tension that we get as they're hiding out is awesome. It feels like the episode is building, 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 building up to something. The whole carpet bombing sequence is terrifying and really good and feels like war and feels rough. The way people treat each other, both in the Xeon Federation and in the Federation, or Xeon, uh, uh, whatever, um, Principality of Xeon, there it is. And in the Federation are kind of rough sometimes. This is war, baby. It's not good. Um, the whole plan and then the whole ploy and and it happens and it works exactly as Sharp dreamed of it working. 
in freaking sane. What an episode. Love it. 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 Gonna check it on Sakuga Brew. There gotta be some cuts. So at least those shots of Char at the end and some of the explosions and stuff have or of Garma at the end and, and some of the explosions and stuff have to be in here. Have to. Mobile suit Gundam source hashtag 10. Ooh, yeah, there are a few. All right, all right, all right. Here you go. Boop. Boom, boom. Oh, I missed one. Um, let me actually close these and boom, 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 boom. Nice. Uh, cool. So this is him just talking to his boy. We don't see them these as corrections, but it's clear Yasuhiko style. I love the way that he draws the the hair swooshes at the front of their faces. They're super great. Okay, cool. Um, and corrections by Yas. Chucking the thing, piloting the thing. His expressions are awesome. The flashing lights are great. The way this ship looks, I don't know if it's Yas himself, but it's fan fucking tastic. Um, all the way through, the explosions are awesome. The faces off of uh, off of Garma are amazing, and this final evaporation is so freaking sick, dude. And this moment is just, it's so perfect to frame it this way and to show him just falling short. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's so simple and so straightforward and so good. Okay, so uh, fully artist unknown, but this is some of that urban combat stuff, which feels really action-y and tense, and I like it a lot um, for those reasons. And also the explosions all throughout are great. Uh, I, I will say this shot here is definitely my favorite of them, showing it from our perspective as he looks in, and then boom! Shocker. Uh, really cool. Okay, um, yeah, this whole sequence, this is the one that I say kind of reminds me of Gunbuster in certain ways, how we're just showing guns going off and explosions and the sky is, is freaking out and everybody inside is falling over um, and uh, it's just, it's crazy, it's crazy. I love it, I think it's great. Character acting, animated, and hair. Yeah, this is just just some conversating and some thonkinating and some hair twirling. It's great. Cool. Um, shooting guys out of that. Well, this is from a different, this is from the previous episode. So this one is miss, um, is miscredited. Uh, I don't know how to, how to, on how to change that on Sakuga Brew. Sorry. I also, I know that I sh should be using the Sakuga extended extension. Um, I haven't done it yet, so I haven't gotten it yet. My bad. I will, I will have it by next week. I promise. Uh, oh yeah. A carpet bombing. Fucking scary. Really well done. A uh, lot of lot of effort put into the individual bombs. Um, not they're not all copy pasted, right? I I assume that some of them are. I assume that each row mostly is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but damn, a lot of effort. Crazy explosions. Crazy episode. Crazy moves. Crazy plays. Char with the plays is the big takeaway from this episode for sure. Um, you know, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, I think you got to respect it. That is, um, there's something about when you, when you, when you got a character who fully buys into the ideas of a relative, like an evil state where dog eat dog is the nature of the game and it is the way that he must play the game. Seeing somebody execute the dog eat dog mentality to a T is brilliant. It's really fun. It's really good. Um, it, again, it's hard not to draw a parallel to another blonde, ruthless boy being Reinhard von Musel of Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Um, there's there's a lot of a parallel there because they are both fucking ruthless in the way that they get their shit done. Char, Char at the moment is a little bit more slimy. Um, the direct betrayals of friends is a little bit more slimy. It would be it would be like Reinhardt actually betraying Kirchheis, something that will never ever happen, right? It, just not a possibility. Like Reinhardt is a character who is who is built around principles and has these specific principles. Shar's principle is more power for me now, please. Thank you. Uh, and if no, if you're in my way, you die. Fucking sick. Fucking sick. So this is an episode where Char's actions once again are going to continue driving the story because Garma's death is going to be a huge issue. Given that he is the prince of the Principality of Zeon, effectively, right? He's the, the son of the Sovereign. 
this is going to galvanize the principality against white base, not against Shar probably because nobody knows that Shar did this betrayal. And Shar is probably going to play it as like, oh, dying gloriously in battle. Garma, my friend, my old, my old buddy, please, please put me in charge of the task force to go hunt down these wrongdoers who took out my best friend. Ah, uh, yes, I will go and avenge him myself. Sick. Unless, okay, so here's another question. What if it's not entirely motivated by, like, greed and lust for power? Because Char says, now it will be, like, time for me to take my own revenge or something. I'm not going to go through and find it. But he does mention my own revenge. As though maybe the, the like, and then he keeps talking about, like, oh, it's your father's fault. And at first, I'm, I was taking that as just, like, oh, it's your father's fault for being powerful. Meaning that... If I get rid of you, there's a cleaner line for me to gain power. But what if it's actually that Shar has a grudge against the ruling, like the ruling elite of the Xeon people? What if, what if, like his family? You know, we say explicitly that he doesn't have a family anymore. What if his family got like murderated by them or something, or got sent into war on the front lines to kill them, or some other kind of like? like big big large scale betrayal and he's just harbored this hatred for that family for forever that would be sick to find out i i kind of would have wished that we would know that earlier but i guess maybe we'll find out soon because you know he he, he just got garma killed so maybe we'll find out what happened there that's really interesting as an idea because that would play much more interestingly if there was a real specific personal revenge stake for Shar in getting rid of Garma and it's not just a path to power sort of thing that could add a, a huge layer to things I'm, I'm really interested to find out if that's true in any way because I, I don't know um cool rad episode rad sequence of episodes i like all of these um a lot I, I i don't think there were any duds in in this set of episodes we got some of the um expansion of what amuro is going through that i wanted we got some great combat uh like leaping into the sky and fighting fighter planes is it's just rad it's kind of sick um we got some humanizing moments that are kind of anti-war in sen or not kind of very anti-war in sentiment showing that the other people on the other side are real humans right they're real people that's pretty fucking rad too um and and some great interactions between characters on both sides and Char making the moviest moves from from messing with the comms in the previous episode to now. Look how far we've come. Look how Char we've come. Wow. Wow. Big betrayal. Big betrayal. Okay, that's a wrap. Garma's gone. Damn. I, I'm going to wrap there. I've been Tia Vu. This has been Mobile Suit Gundam uh, 8, 9, and 10, ending with Garma's Fate. It's fucking sick, man. It's a, it's a crazy set of episodes. Uh, this is definitely going to shake things up big time, and I am excited for it. Um, and we're going to start to see a little bit more of the like broader picture of politics in this universe, which I'm really excited for as well. Super cool. I'll see you next week for more Mobile Suit Gundam. Thanks for watching. Peace.